I was in seventh grade. I read an Isaac Asimov story about the implications of what free energy would do. And I sort of knew I wanted something. I was going to be an engineer or scientist just from day one. And this sort of said, okay, what can you do to make a difference? And that was where I, I sort of said advanced nuclear power was something that could make a difference. And that low cost clean energy could make a, a huge difference to society. If I'm going to have to get up every day for 50 or 60 years and working on something, well, it ought to be something I believe in. And so here is some of just Flynac. This is what fluoride salts fly. It actually looks almost identical to this. Liquid salts are an outstanding heat transfer media. It really doesn't matter what you're going to be transferring heat for, whether this be a solar power tower, whether this be a salt-cooled reactor, a molten salt reactor. Viscosity on it is 30 times larger, but water is very low viscosity, so it's still a very low viscosity fluid. Some people might imagine this is quite a gloopy or kind of slow-moving liquid, but it's actually quite fluid. You're right. It does go through a melt much like a glass as opposed to water which doesn't quite do that so we want to run it our 100 c or so above this so it does flow nicely if you go ahead and you do and you repeat doing things in here you can see you start to etch the glass just a little bit so what we have to do in a reactor is keep things very highly reducing if you put extra beryllium in there essentially giving you a preferred spot to rust and it's, so this is all about controlling the potential corrosion of the salts within its it, within any vessel that you put it in. Yep, the iron in some of the, the alloys is more soluble at higher temperatures, and so you will get your heat exchanger where it's at hot temperatures, you will get metals taken out of solution, and then it gets to the colder end, it'll redeposit, and so you can self-plug your heat exchangers, uh, which you would very much like not to do, and your, your technique to avoid that is keep everything very well reduced so it doesn't corrode in the first place. You'll make it lousy, but there are no strong chemical reactions that are going to take place between the salt and even direct contact with water. The hazards on this, the same thing as hazards on a deep fat fryer, which is I trip throwing hot oil or hot salt in this case on visitors would be considered a bad thing. But there's nothing else to this, it just makes a nice little clear liquid. But I'll just pour this out into a little stainless steel crucible and you could hear that little snap there was just there was a little bit of moisture at the bottom of the stainless steel. I mean at 450 I mean this thing is a solid so it doesn't take very long for it to form the solid again. Isn't that a nice feature? <laughs> if you had a little crack on this and it was sort of it was starting to weep it forms a plug. Self-plugging. Self-plug. Yeah, that's a nice thing, not being under pressure. On the other hand, if your design keeps the vessel hot, it'll stay liquid on there, but that's why you have a guard vessel. If, you know, absolute worst case happens and you have massive vessel rupture, well, you still catch it. The idea of this loop to retain our expertise in using high temperature salts, to provide a platform for us to test different components, different reactor concepts, Above about 600 C, it becomes technologically very difficult to transfer heat effectively. The loop is designed to run at 700 Celsius, that's about 1300 degrees Fahrenheit, and the whole loop is made out of Inconel 600. Currently the loop is designed to run on Flinac, uh, it has pretty similar properties to Flyb, it's just a different salt with a different uh, composition. The main purpose of the, the enclosure is to keep the heat inside. The loop is designed to be about 200 kilowatts and at 700 C that's pretty hot and rather keep the heat in here out the, out the ceiling instead of trying to air condition the room with 200 kilowatts. <laughs>